Um, it's Padge from Bullet for My Valentine. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I am delicious. I'm. I'm glad that we're. <laughs> I'm glad that we're getting out of lockdown. I'm glad that we are moving forward with live music, um, of which you were one of the first big bands in this country to celebrate because you played Download. Um, what was that? Your first show back since lockdown? Uh, it was actually longer. It was our first show back since November the thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. Wow. So mm -hmm. most bands probably would maybe have like a warm up gig in front of friends and family. You guys have gone, no, nah, don't worry about it. Well, let's just let's just headline download. That'll be fine. How was it? Uh, it was amazing, man. I was terrified. You know, I think a, a few of us are slightly anxious, but um, it, it was just like, you know, just like riding a bike, man. We, we put in the rehearsal time. We all knew what we was doing and we went up there and we smashed it. The only bad thing about it was that the set had to end. It was amazing. It was like it was like heavy metal Christmas. Oh, dude! That I mean, some of the photos and some of the the videos online, like they just looked unbelievable. Um, I want to really dive, if I can, into who you are and where you've come from with regards to music, because everyone knows you as your Padge. You're from Bullet for My Valentine, but like, where did your journey in music begin? Um. Uh, I mean, you know, I, when I was sort of like a, a kid, really, and I, I used to hear the radio and what was it back then? Radio and eight track in the car, you know? So a lot of Gene Pitney, a lot of Michael Jackson. Uh, okay. Yeah, some, you know, some reggae stuff. Uh, oh. Can't remember uh, some woman my mother used to listen to. I started back there, but then my brother, I used to records started coming in. So when my brother went out, I used to go in his bedroom and uh, play his records. So there'd be like Metallica, Twisted Sister, Motley Crue, a yeah, little bit yeah. heavier. And uh, uh, then CDs came along and, uh, you know, I was still into the pop. So I, I didn't know, really know anything about genres or music. It was just music to me, you okay. know? And then Nirvana came along and Nirvana changed everything, you know? It was big Deep guitars, time. screaming vocals. Yeah, yeah. Totally did. Uh, big guitars, screaming vocals, crazy, crazy, bleached hair, ripped jeans, and I was sold. And I want, always wanted to play guitar after watching Kurt Cobain on um, MTV. Wow. Uh, so I started learning, hanging around with uh, not so sports type types of people, and uh, you know, started hanging around with the rockers in school. Oh, cool. And I uh, just learned guitar, and from there on, it just got heavier. You know, Metallica, Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pantera, Machine Head, Corn, all that sort of stuff. And who? But, who uh, it was definitely Kurt Cobain. Who to date, uh, excluding Nirvana? Who who do you listen to now? That whatever your mood, you can just put it on and just go fucking like yes, I'm so ready to go and do whatever I want to do. Uh, believe it or not, the last week, past week, I've been playing Elvis. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> yeah. I was expecting you to say like Mega Death. Or like, <laughs> okay. No, I love it all. I, I mean, I, I can play Elvis. I can I can go and have a show and, and play decapitated, you know. Yes. And then I'll enjoy a glass of wine with some Elvis in the evening, you know. So I love it all. The only thing I don't like is dance music, but okay. Yeah, anything with a melody, anything with a guitar, or you know, a, a decent beat, then I'm in. Like you know. So, so obviously, I know you do loads of interviews, and I'm I'm going to make oh. this one. Uh, one to to sort of hopefully remember. Um, I want you to tell me the most X-rated, outrageous thing that you have done because you're a rock star and because you have got away with it. Whatever comes to your mind. What are you thinking, are you thinking about? What's legal to say? I can't, I'm not telling you that one. <laughs> Oh, there's some things. There's some things I'm not. I'm not. I'm quite ashamed of. You know, I was <laughs> stupid when you're younger, but it's all. It's all in the name of fun. But uh, there's a few things. Um, did I tell you about the strip club one? Go on, tell me. So we're on tour with. Uh, it's a festival tour, I think, and it's Seether, the band Seether, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the the front man's name now. Uh, is it Scott? 
I, I I'm not sure the front man. So uh, we're drinking outside the buses after the show, and uh, he says, "Oh, hey, hey, Badge, let's go to a strip club, and uh, you can ride our bus to Canada." Right? And I'm like, "Sounds great to me. Let's go." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we get there, and uh, you know, we get drunk. He goes off, does his does a dance or whatever. I, I'm sat there, just you know, sort of pounding Jack Daniels or whatever I used to do. Yeah. And then you know, I I went for a dance. So I come back about an hour later or whatever. I, they had the dance in last an hour, but I come back and um, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like, Where, where's he gone? You know, where, where's where's this the long head guy gone? Where's the door? Oh, he, he left about five minutes ago. I was like, well, what well, left the building? And he's and they're like, yeah. And so I'm like, no, fuck no, that's, that's my list, my lift to to the next venue. I think we're on tour with the Vince Enfold. Casual. And, uh, so I run out to the strip club, open the door, and as I open the front door, I just see his bus pulling away <laughs> across across the street. So the son of a bitch left me in, uh, I don't know where we were, but I, I was about six hours away from the next venue, so I was uh, pretty screwed, screwed. So I went back in, and uh, there were some nice people there who I'd been, you know, sitting with drinking, and uh, they just took care of me, and they... Uh, you know, there was this, I can't remember her name, but she was a really nice girl. She wanted to go to the show anyway. So she gave me a place to sleep on a friend's couch and then drove me all the way to uh, Calgary, I think it was. Up, up. Wow. Yeah, Canada. It was uh, scary as hell, but thank God there's um, some decent people there. See you there, <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> so you, you, missed your, you missed your lift to get into another country. And um, yes, like that, yeah. you then had to bribe a stripper to leave her. No, place no, she was a she was a punter. She wasn't. Oh, a stripper. oh, oh! I thought, <laughs> I thought she was a stripper. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Can you stop working for a minute? I need a lift. Um, I mean, when when you say stuff like, "Oh, we were just on tour with Avenged Sevenfold," do, does saying that stuff out loud ever get boring? Does it? Is there ever a dull moment in the bullet for my Valentine office? I don't believe there has been, man. It's um, well, there's been there's been some, but uh, like you say, I, I've had a few of these questions over the past weeks, and it's like you know, have you have you t- is there any more boxes you you know you'd like to tick? And it's like we've ticked a lot, man, and I'm I'm really grateful and you know blessed to have been able to tick those boxes, and you know where we where we came from, what we've achieved, and how long. The career we have is uh, it's pretty awesome, man. You know, I mean, if it all stopped tomorrow, we've achieved and you know we've had success, and I could die a happy man because it's been it's been really really good. But uh, mm. where do we go from here? You know, I was gonna ask because you you guys have been going from I guess late nineties, um, really. That's when kind of bullets started, um, and and you've been going for what? Where are we? 20, 25 years? Twenty years? You every single album you release, in my opinion, gets better and better. Apart from your betrayal, your betrayal is the best song you guys have ever written. Um, but you're, I suppose, Padge, going through the motions of promoting a metal band and a rock band in the 21st century. Whereas when Bullet first kicked off, you didn't have the internet, you didn't have social media. Now you're looking after Florence Black, who are an enormously talented band. I've seen them live. I can vouch for it. I think one of my ribs actually moved place after that show um, because of the pure sound coming from the kick drum. But do you think it's harder for bands now to get noticed because there's so much competition on the internet? Or do you think the internet has actually made things much easier for bands? Um, I think it's easier to get noticed, but then it's uh, substance and longevity, you know, like you could spend a fortune on sponsor- sponsorship online and through Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. Mm. But unless your band has got any substance, it's just a waste of, of money, you know. Um, there has to be some element of talent. There should be, right? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I guess for some bands it's not, but uh, we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> go on, name one. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I think, you know, when Florence asked me, would I, would I get involved with them? I was just like, well, I knew they were talented. I didn't, I didn't even see the band. I heard them. I opened the door into the venue. Okay. I, I'd never seen them before. And I just heard this 
this tsunami of rock. Yeah, that sounds right. Ball, yeah, smashed me right <laughs> in my face. Uh, so I hadn't even seen him. I had only heard him, and I was like, "Wow!" And so I turned to the people I was with. Jen was there. Yeah. And I said, "Whoa, well, this is this is awesome." And uh, here we are now today. So I think there has to be an element of talent with the band. And you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you're making noise, isn't it? You're making uh, making songs and noise. So if it, if it, if you can't play live and you shit, uh, don't bother. Can can I can I about playing live? What are your thoughts on you know things like backing tracks? For me, as a punter. I feel like I'm paying money to go and see a band perform live. And yeah, I totally get why bands play to click and stuff like that. But when it comes into the realms of even like some bands have, you know, like Limp Bizkit performing, he had like a guide vocal. I was like, what yeah. the fuck? Like I'm, I'm, I could go and listen to this album on my own. Like, you know, and I don't know, f for me, I'm not a big fan, but what about you? Um, well, there's, there's a big difference between actually playing the backing tracks of like if if I was miming my guitar on stage, then that's a fraud, that's a fake. Mm -hmm. If you're miming vocals on stage, not backing vocals, you know, but if if you're leaving the main vocal in or uh, you know, the bass is uh, the bass is still on track or whatever, it's it's um that's a fake, it's a fraud. Mm -hmm. We play all of our own, own instruments and, you know, whatever line we're singing, playing down or whatever, then that's real. But yeah. we do ha add on uh, extras that we've put on the album, like overdubs and, and harmonies and stuff. Um, it just gives a, a bigger, better, rounder picture of the song. But everything we do, everything we play is real, you know? Uh, not to, not that I would ever disagree with how you're running your band because you you're so you're you know you guys are so successful but the thing that brought your attention to Florence Black yeah was the rawness and the fact that you know you said you opened the venue to the door and you were you know I, I'm I wonder if I feel like I'm getting a tour of your house <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah like I, I I wonder what the the future of live music will be you know taking into consideration things like backing tracks and, and and stuff like that for me i i feel like i don't know i'd, I'd rather i'd rather hear someone singing a backing vocal that was a bit flat or a bit sharp rather <laughs> rather than i don't know something being perfect but maybe that's the world that we're living in you know it's all about instant gratification now isn't it like social media and and, and the internet yeah and um i think you know there, there are a lot of bands out there that don't don't do it religiously uh but uh, you know i wouldn't say unfortunately there's a there's a lot of bands a lot of bands who have playback you know yeah. um it is it is becoming a uh you know just like a, a standard thing like, now yeah yeah industry standard um yeah i think yeah you must be you your, your head i suppose must be in almost two different halves because you're managing a band and you're also running a very successful one. Where the bloody hell do you find time to go and do world tours, headline download, play all these festivals, and push a band, which is a full-time job for a band manager anyway? Um, you just have to. Uh, I mean, they got their record coming out in like two weeks. Um, it's massive panic stations at the moment. I, th I think we've got everything ready. But don't forget, they am, we, this is all, um, there's no label involved. They, they, they're unsigned. So mm. the pressure's sort of doubly on management now because um, there's no one handling marketing or anything like that, you know, that sort wow. of thing and distribution and even manufacturing is, uh, that's been a tough one going back and forth because, you know, we've never done it before. Uh, we don't know, we, don't, we, don't, we know what we're doing, but we've never mm. done it before. So we have, we're learning at the same time as well. It's hard work, man. And uh, I guess the only, Answer to your question is less sleep, <laughs> more alcohol, <laughs> more alcohol, less sleep, and uh, just, just leave your phone on. Uh, don't don't leave your phone on silent because or leave it on silent because that that sucker doesn't stop all day, man. What to somebody that wanted to walk in the footsteps of you, and to someone that 
you know, their, their, their dream is to be, I mean, you literally just a couple of weekends ago, you lived somebody's dream of performing in front of like, you know, tens of thousands of people at download. What would your advice, what would your advice be to somebody looking to get into that? Um, I mean, there's no doubt that we've worked our, our, uh, plums oh, off, you know, getting you and, uh, plums, you know, plums. <laughs> back in the day, you know, we, 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 um, we didn't stop working. We were just flat out because we were doing day jobs then as well, which yeah. was really tough, but you know, our passion and our drive just pushed us and pushed us and pushed us. And yes, you know, there's a bit of luck involved. I'm, I'm sure there is, you know, and, uh, I can acknowledge that, but you got to you got to give all that. Never give up, and be prepared to sacrifice almost everything, man. It's um, sure. It's a really tough game. It's a tough business, but uh, if you if you're super, you know, driven and super passionate, and you you really really love what you do, and you can uh, you know, hey, I don't want to sound like a dick, but you're good at it. Yeah. You can keep doing it, man. And I'm I'm sure um I'm sure you know that. I'm sure it, it, it won't end then. It'll keep going for you, you know? And for anyone wanting to get into band management, again, the the the, the other side of Padge, where, where do people start? From, from my experience, I've always found a lot of bands are too trusting in, you know, managers that might have had a, 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 a bit of success for eight minutes with somebody in the 80s, you know, and, and that's always the worst thing because these kind of wannabe managers are riding off the success of something they did once and it was a fluke. But yeah. as a manager, you, you must need so much dedication. And, and where do you find a good manager? And, and, and how does one be a good manager? Um, well, I don't know, because initially I said no, because I don't know how, how to manage, you know. And I'm you're still saying no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was just being honest. But I think I think that's the key is if you are going to be a manager, be honest, you know, and uh, don't go, don't look out, set out to rip the band off or, or fuck them over just, just for your uh, financial benefit, you know. It's important that you love the artist you're working for. Yeah. It's important that you love their music. Uh, you know, and we do. We love Florence Black. Uh, you know, they they some of my closest friends. Uh, That's nice. Just yeah, it just just kind of randomly happened when we got really close. They came and recorded in my studio and stuff, and we just built a, a really really good relationship. And I think that's the most important before any of the the uh, you know the management stuff that happens. You know, is is forming yeah. our relationship. Uh, you know. Uh, it is a love and hate relationship, but um, you know, forming our initial bond and, and loving, loving the artist enough that you're passionate about them. Again, back to the passion. Otherwise, if if you know if they are pieces of shit, then I'm done. Like, yeah, and 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 it's so obvious that those guys like totally love you. Everything they do, it's like, yeah, we're doing this with Padge and blah blah blah. But yeah, I think the two of you have, have struck gold with each other. Like, they're an amazing band, and and you know you know exactly what to do to get noticed um if people want to find florence black where can they go um they, their, they their are... address not their socials no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean they're on they're on facebook they're on twitter they're on instagram i think tristan's got a tiktok but they do have um a website with all of the information on there if anyone wants to contact management or the bands directly cool. there's a shop on the website you know there's all of all of the up and coming gigs uh, at Florence Black UK, uh, UK, I think it is. Florence Black UK, yeah. I love how you're a band manager and you've spoken so much about passion, but you don't know your band's website. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the tech side, man. I'm mean, used to the tech. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me. It's been no so cool to like hang with you and um, it'd be nice to see you soon. Um, so, yeah. How are you doing anyway? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm going to stop recording. Um, 